Hello, everyone. Welcome back uh, from our last uh, break on day two of the Uncovered conference. Uh, this will be our final panel of the day, but it'll be a very, very interesting one. The Ibiza Affair will take you behind the headlines. As a matter of fact, the journalists behind the Ibiza Affair will discuss the cross-border collaboration that led to the resignation of Austrian Vice Chancellor Strache and the film they have made about it, which will, of course, screen right after the panel, a story that made international headlines. So I'm very eager, very curious to hear from the journalist who helped discover and uncover this uh, story. Uh, to moderate this uh, session, I'm very happy to yield the floor now to the director of ARENA for Journalism in Europe and Data Harvest, Brigitte Alta. Brigitte, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and a warm welcome to Bastian Obermeier, Frederik Obermeier and Florian Klenk from Süddeutsche Zeitung in Munich, uh, the two Obermeiers, and from Falta magazine, Florian Klenk. Um, we are going to talk about the making of the Ibiza affair. Uh, which started with a publication in Germany about an Austrian topic, which is not necessarily the way it starts, but it evolved then into a cross-border collaboration. Now, in order to get everybody uh, on the hook, and we would now like to share a video, which the organizers have gotten, Please show the video now. Die Magazin Spiegel und der Süddeutschen Zeitung wurden Videos überreicht, die wir vergangene Woche vor Veröffentlichung einsehen konnten. Und diese Videos zeigen den heutigen Vizekanzler Heinz Christian Strache und den freiheitlichen Klubobmann Johann Gutenberg. Dieses Video wurde im Juli 2017, drei Monate vor der Nationalratswahl, aufgenommen. Das wichtigste Thema ist die österreichische Medienlandschaft. Strache möchte Einfluss gewinnen auf die Kronenzeitung über eine russische Oligarchenmitte. Sobald die Kronenzeitung übernimmt, sobald das der Fall ist, ist man ganz offen. Dann müssen wir zusammenhoben, müssen sagen, so. Da gibt es bei uns in der Krone zack, zack, zack. Die drei, vier, drei, vier Leute, die müssen ja, gepusht werden. Die drei, drei, vier Leute, Leute die müssen abserviert werden. Heinz-Christian Strache bietet der Frau nicht nur die Kronenzeitung an. Er sagt, man könnte vielleicht auch noch einen Sender äh, möglicherweise privatisieren, weil, und das sagt er ganz deutlich, wir wollen eine Medienlandschaft wieder Orban. Das heißt, er möchte unabhängige Medien gerne unter seine Kontrolle bringen oder in dem Fall unter die Kontrolle einer Oligarchin. Wenn, wenn das Medium in zwei, drei Wochen vor der Wahl plötzlich dieses Medium auf einmal uns pusht, ja. dann hast du hey, dann machen wir nicht 27. Dann machen wir ja. Er will also Macht über das Nationalheiligungstum der Österreicher bekommen, die Kronenzeitung. Und dafür verspricht er ja etwas. Das erste in einer Regierungsbeteiligung, was ich habe zusagen kann, ist, da hat er seine Gewinner auf der Ebene. Er sagt immer wieder, er möchte nichts Illegales machen. Er sagt immer wieder, er ist sauber, er ist nicht korrupt. Gleichzeitig schlägt er aber Dinge vor, die nicht in Ordnung sind. Dann sage ich Ihnen, soll sie nicht eine Firma, die die Staat gründen, weil alle staatlichen und auch wenn die jetzt nicht Staat kriegt, sind sie Und er sagt auch, wenn ihr das alles gefällt und wenn ihr das politische Programm gefällt, dann können sie auch spenden. Aber nicht direkt an die Partei, sondern es gäbe Vereine, gemeinnützige Vereine, wo man hinspendet. Die Spender, die er nennt, Waffenindustrielle, Glücksspielfirmen, Mäzene, aber auch Immobilienspekulanten, nennt er namentlich, sie bestreiten alle gespendet zu haben. Wir können letztlich nicht überprüfen, ob diese Angaben richtig sind oder nicht. Was wir überprüfen können, ist, dass dieses Video echt ist. Es ist vom Spiegel und auch von der Süddeutschen Zeitung und auch von uns überprüft worden, dass es Strache und Gutenberg ist. Er bestätigt auch, an diesem Abend dort gewesen zu sein. Er sagt, es war ein feuchtfröhlicher Abend. Aber er habe immer wieder darauf hingewiesen, dass alle Gesetze einzuhalten sind. Aber ich muss trotzdem immer rechtsfrieber, 
Drachen und Gepenes haben gegenüber der Süddeutschen Zeitung und dem Spiegel angegeben, dass sie dort nichts Verbotenes gemacht haben, dass sie weder Geld genommen haben noch Geld gefordert haben. Sie haben dort auch keine Versprechungen gemacht. Sie sagen, es war viel Alkohol im Spiel und ein rein privates Treffen. Die beiden wurden in eine Falle gelockt von äh, Schauspielern oder von Leuten, die so tun, als wären sie russische Oligarchen. Und diese Villa war auch gemietet. Sogar die Autos, die davor gestanden sind, waren nur gemietet. Aus welchen Motiven dieses Video gemacht wurde, wissen wir nicht. Darüber können wir nur spekulieren. Es können alle möglichen Motive sein. Dieses Video zu veröffentlichen ist eminent wichtig, weil es zeigt, wie der heutige Vizekanzler und der heutige fpö clubchef der damals immerhin Wiener Vizebürgermeister war, hinter den Kulissen denken, wie sie über Journalismus denken, wie sie über die Medien denken. Wie passt es zusammen, dass man einerseits sagt, man ist nicht korrupt und nur für die Interessen der Österreicher da, aber gleichzeitig versucht man die Kronenzeitung, das mächtigste Medium im Land, an eine russische Oligarche zu bringen, im eigenen Interesse. Ich möchte gerne eine Erklärung dafür haben, was diese Vereine sind, warum man gemeinnützige Vereine braucht, um die Partei zu finanzieren. Und ich hätte gerne, dass auch die Staatsanwaltschaft dieses Video anschaut und überprüft, ob hier schon eine verbotene Vorteilsannahme oder ein Einwerben von Bestechungsgeldern vorliegen könnte. All right. Um, I think there are quite a few German speakers here, and those who are not would know that cross-border collaboration means that we'll have to live with different languages, and we enjoy that. Um, but anyway, Florian, you were interviewed in that video, and you live in the country where the scandal blew up with the video when it was published in Germany. Could you just very shortly tell uh, our participants here why we should see a gentleman in a t-shirt uh, arguing with, with his arms in all directions. Why is this a scandal? What did he say? You have to unmute it if you go to the blue button underneath uh, at the bottom of your yeah. screen. So now it worked. Yeah. Maybe I should start with the news of the day. 60 minutes uh, before this conference started, the Corruption Authority of Austria uh, uh, told us that they uh, filed a indictment because of bribery. So they charge him with bribery in a case that was uh, uncovered because of this video. So it's the first indictment we have in Austria in the Ibiza case. So uh, Heinz Christian Stracher, our vice chancellor, will have to go to court in a criminal proceeding and the maximum um, penalty he, he can get is five years of prison. So this is uh, really uh, good news that the Justice Authority took this video and started investigation and uh, they brought it to an end today. So why is it important? Because of that, because uh, this video was the kickoff of a huge investigation of the Austrian justice authorities that started to investigate. They investigated uh, briberies, they investigated uh, illegal uh, funding of the Austrian parties, especially by a company called Novomatic, which is an international gambling uh, company. And it started to investigate uh, a lot of political issues, uh, especially concerning the independence of media. And uh, all in all, two days after uh, Süddeutsche and Spiegel released this video, uh, the, the government uh, stepped down, resigned, <laughs> which is which was the <laughs> a, a kind of reaction to a kind of reaction. To, uh, to notice. <laughs> yeah. And one thing, if I might add, uh, may add, um, it wasn't the case. It may may seem like, but we didn't publish this first in Germany. We published. All together, all partners, the Falter, the Spiegel, and Twitter at the same time on Friday. So it was, um, we had received the video earlier, but then we worked hand in hand in the last week. And uh, all right, thank you very much. Yeah, I just thank you very much for this that. detail. Thank you, Florian, for contextualizing it. 
and then maybe over to you to tell us how did you get hold of this video and how did it all start so um Patrick and we, we got contacted by someone who explained that there might be um there might be material showing that um someone in the european government may be open for corruption that was the mm -hmm. that we were given and of course we were really interested and so there was a first meeting where we um we got to see um some parts of this video so um some of the crucial parts and also um we saw more elements um that seemed that mr strache was um having a lavish lifestyle financed by his party which his party didn't know and and some other stuff so um there were, were pictures with um lots of cash in a car that uh, we've been explained uh, used to be his car so uh, like thousands of, of of euros in cash in in the back of his car and um we we said that we'd be you know hugely interested in in getting the material in our hands and checking it um, to see if it's really um um you know if it's authentic if someone manipulated it and if there's a public interest and that um, was roughly a year before publication and but then we had to we had, we had to go through a hard time because we didn't uh we didn't get it in our hands um for many months and uh there was nothing that we could have done so we just had to wait until the time was right for the people behind the video and did you know that you and or Süddeutsche and Spiegel were contacted or uh did did the source say anything about who else got the material well in in the first weeks it was only us and we talked um back then already to florian to have a first feeling if this video is already known or what uh, you know if he also got got contacted and and he knew that there was something and he already there were already um someone had tried to contact him but then in the end didn't do it and later on Frederick and me learned that like months after our first screening if you may say so <laughs> um we learned that they then also had approached their spiegel and uh, so we decided that we don't want to um fight here uh, we don't want to compete uh, we decided to to better join our forces and work together on this story i think this is one of the really interesting aspects that the competition even though it's the same language area the competition was parked and you decided Sounds like that easy. Hey, you have a scoop in your hand and you have to publish it. But this was not how this felt at the beginning. Um, it took on the start until we got hold of the video. And that was for us the most crucial part um, because only watching such a um, video is not enough to publish. We needed the video in our hands and then the process of investigation started. Um, we needed to check if it was falsified. If it's real, you are you're muted. You're muted, Frederick. Sorry, I don't know what happened. We had to um, um, check if the video was falsified or not. We had to check um, if it's really Mr. Gudinos and Strache or some perfectly um, tainted um, actors. We also had to. 
escalate the response. And was we well aware of the fact that this is not something that you can do within a day or two. So for us, it was um, obvious that if we uh, go into a red race with the Spiegel uh, or possibly other media outlets, this could lead to mistakes. And we realized and saw this as a story that um, could have huge impact, uh, impact for um, and we would, wanted to make sure that we do not make any mistakes, especially uh, mistakes that we can prevent by taking the time to thoroughly investigating the video. That's why we um, approached and spoke with Spiegel uh, and together with them make the decision that we join forces, although we are in general compared to that this video is of such public uh, interest that competition among media uh, media outlets because it's most important to thoroughly investigate it. And when did you then reach out to, to Florian? In, um, several days when we already um, did investigate um, the video. Um, we are all of the fact, as we have already been in that we need his expertise, that he already heard about this video. And we have worked with Florian um, already beforehand on international collaborative stories like the Panama Papers. So we know each other, we trust each other, and we wanted to have an Austrian partner because it's an Austrian topic. And I think, especially in those fact, uh, cases, when it comes to details of economic uh, and politics, you really need uh, to have detailed insight in what's going on in Austria. And we didn't want to make any mistake. And the best mistake, uh, the, the best uh, way of preventing mistakes is to bring such a specialist as Florian and the Falter team into um, this collaboration. When it comes to Hartes Drache, um, because um, one um, of Florian's team has written an amazing book about um, uh, him already. So we wanted to have the expertise of Florian and his team um, on board. And you didn't understand the Viennese dialect, Stache spoke. That's the fact. <laughs> I, I had hoped that you would not mention this fact, but he's of course right. <laughs> Which is uh... No, also, we, we didn't want to get trapped somehow. And there are, you know, in, in, in the, the interior politics of every country, there are so many mines and so, so, so many traps. And uh, uh, we were, you know, we didn't even know Mr. Gudenos before we saw the video. So we were so far outside this world that we need one from within. And how did you then go about the, the cooperation between Spiegel, the Deutsche and Falter? Did you enter that, what we know from other uh, cross-border collaborations? You made an agreement, a team, and then uh agreed on the publication date and and took it from there or tell us a little bit about the the how you did it behind the scenes did you fight about viennese dialects or <laughs> did you laugh about <laughs> now you well, it wasn't that it wasn't that planned as we usually want to do projects uh, bigger projects because we um, we received the video kind of spontaneous, so we, we didn't know when when this day would come, and so then we had we had to be, you know, as 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 fast as possible and as thoroughly as necessary, and that that means um, we were working you know, for many days in a, in a row, and we we um, we had already set up team um, um, at the set, and the Spiegel had also designated members of their team. And so um, um, we decided together, of course, that we would approach um, the Falter now, and then we divided the work. I mean, as as you do in in, in, uh, in most collaborations. So we, we all members of the team um, from Germany were watching the video and, and were transcribing. So we, knew what we were t talking about and we were re-watching the, the crucial moments over and over again to be really sure what was said and and then also when that when the falter was on board they re rewatched then they explained us well 
they didn't exactly say what you think. It's a saying, for example, in Vien Viennese. Like, and so that in, the, in the end, we had a kind of a transcript that, that we could work with. And we even, what we, so we knew that um, the other side um, would, would scream and yell uh, fake news, you know? So we tried to, to verify as much as we could. And I think Frederick is going to explain in a second because he's the specialist about the ears of Mr. Schache. But what I can say, we had a, a, um, a, a, someone who spoke Russian and uh, was taught the translation in court. And so we had her watch the crucial parts in Russian and, and translate and, and, and in a written way. So we had it all what was said in Russian. And then we took the parts that we wanted to, to cite, you know, all, all the quotes we showed to a lawyer, an independent lawyer, and we made him watch the video and read the quotes. And then he had to um, certify that what he was watching was what, what we had in the quote, so that we had certified quotes, which might, may sound strange, but we knew that they would would say, you know, I've never said that, maybe you misheard, whatever. So that was uh, how we went on. And, and now to the ears, Frederick. Well, and the ears I were think... a perfect cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, the ears, and the ears were super important. Um, also, we are making a lot of fun about them um, now. But at, at the beginning, I mean, we are now knowing that Gudinos and Strache are on this video because they both confirmed. But one of our fears was them claiming Hey, that's not me. It's like, like me, but it's not me. And you know how Hollywood works um, and stuff like that. And we all know that we are living in a, living in a time of deep fakes where you can uh, get Mr. Obama saying things that he would never say and uh, getting Mr. Trump to say things that he will also ne uh, never say. So we approached um, the Spiegel approached and we approached independently another um, expert who is normally certifying um, in front of German courts when it comes to identifying um, individuals on surveillance cameras. Um, and I must admit that I was a little bit naive. I thought we would give this person some pictures of Mr. Strache and Mr. Gudenas and the video, and then this person would say, yeah, that's them, um, like in a scientific way. But um, this expert immediately came to speak up about ears, and I was like, what? If you really want to do me this uh, job properly, I need a picture of Strache's ear from the front, from the back, from the thing from Mr. Green. And we were like, what? What expert are you? And he was like, yeah. Um, and from ears, and he wanted to compare the, the, the ears of Mr. Strache and, and Mr. Gudinos from press and uh, news agency photos with the video. And he then, in the end, came to the conclusion, what we all know, yes, it was Mr. Strache and Mr. Gudinos. And what we also asked um, uh, several independent experts is to basically check if cuts in the video, if, some, if there is hints for any manipulation. Um, and they, uh, the experts that we um, approached um, came to the conclusion, no, there are uh, no hints for this. There's, um, uh, there are some questions, but we'll get back to that later, because now I would like to hear how you went from analyzing the video to then following up on the on what was said there, because that would need some, I mean, the first thing is the verification. And I like this uh, idea of looking into details like ears. Uh, that's really instructive. Um, but how did you go from there? I mean, there were quite a few things were said that would need uh, other uh, a further investigation to to prove whether it was whether there was any anything about that or not that's maybe a question to florian how did you you're muted again sorry mm. there you are 
so I think in the video we saw th three major issues. The first issue was how Strache told about uh, the the money he got from his, from his, for his party, the, the the financing of party, and he told that he he named special uh, companies that gave money to the FPÖ party, and and he described how it works so that they have like private. Uh, um, unions and the, the people could put money in and then they put the, the money to the parties. That's the first thing. The second thing was that he um, he wanted to sell the Kronenzeitung, which is a major newspaper in Austria, which is a very powerful newspaper, about uh, 30 to 40 percent of Austrians read it. And he uh, wanted uh, this uh, Russian lady to buy it and to fight in favor of the Freedom Party. And he said, when you buy it, and when uh, we come to power, you get uh, um, a lot of uh, jobs in the, in the public uh, from, the, from the state. And he named some company where he will get the jobs off and give it to, the, to this, uh, this Russian woman. And this was the moment I knew that he has to resign because this was open corruption. And there were some other points where he just discussed his uh, his political issues. He talked about Mr. Orban, and he talked about uh, um, about how he financed his party with gold, for example. Or he there was some gossip around. But I think the most important parts were those two. And so it was uh, on us to just to ask him if this is true what he says. He said, "Well, it's not true. I was just drunk, and I was just." Uh, making fun and nothing is true i was just talking so we need facts uh, and uh, um, uh, when, after we published uh, the video uh, we started to investigate if there are those uh, uh, private uh, corporations he spoke about and we found it and there were already other austrian newspapers like profil or the standard uh, or the Presse, and they started to dig and and we found uh, some um, some private uh, um, unions or Vereine uh, is the German word where, where, where we could find the money. Yeah. So you, you published the video and then you started, you, you kept working on the information that, yeah. that was there. Yeah. So the main lump of the work before the publication was uh, to see what's there and to verify 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 the origin of the video or the 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 yeah, yeah. The, of the video yeah yes, also, also we 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 looked into how much um how much could we um how much could we authenticate the 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 origin so how how could we see for example if uh, the villa that they they told us about did that did really exist so we we um we could look at you know the invoices um we could we got the receipts for the food that they had ordered that day uh, um so we tried to uh, reconstruct everything that 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 we could around the video and that that we knew you know they were really there they you know they're not uh, they're not Playing a, a show for us in the in the back of some TV production. So so we we really try to to get as close as possible, knowing that you know in the end uh, they won't be as open as we'd hoped for. But but you know given the the huge um, um, public impact and the huge public interest, uh, um, we we had to say at some point, okay, now it's enough. Um, which was, by the way, after we also spoke um, the woman who was who was pretending to be the Russian oligarch's niece, <laughs> have to say that, uh, uh, and so to make sure that she was not uh, not blackmailed into into playing a role and all that. So we we did all that that we could, and uh, and then you know when we finally said, okay, we are sure it's really Strach and Gudenos, We are sure the video is not manipulated and falsified. And we are sure that we understood what's going on and what what we to see. Then we said, okay, now we feel confident to publish. And I heard Florian say in the beginning, in the video we showed in the beginning of this session, 
that the villa was rented and even the cars was rented. And I thought, well, wow, they've been checking every detail. This is pretty good. Um, we are nearing uh, 5.30, so I will start slowly looking towards the questions from the participants and the first are there already. Um, the, let, let me start with the, with the one which is put here by Okan Velikli. Uh, it's, he asks, Florian, what do you know about rumors that other videos showing Austrian politicians doing or saying controversial things might exist? I don't have, know the rumors, but if uh, uh, Okan has the, those videos or he has uh, links to persons <laughs> that have those videos, please uh, send, send them to us and we make a cooperation <laughs> with Tita to send them. Maybe they are about uh, German politicians, so we could uh, say thank you to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I don't know you, about that. You yeah. meet in the chat here and we'll maybe, all have a little... Maybe we, uh, maybe we should discuss how we selected the six minutes or how... Yes, we do that was the next question, is which the you read it already. Yeah. And for those who haven't followed the chat, there was a question uh, by Sabine that uh, asking how you selected the scenes that you published and whether there are other uh, scenes that might be worth publishing that you would consider publishing or not consider publishing. So how did you select the scenes? Did, that, did you do that together or was that uh, individual, uh, each of the media or media partners? How did you do it? Maybe Florian, you start? I think uh, or maybe maybe Bastian okay. should start because you, yeah, yeah. you have the lead. Yeah. So so um, it's um, it, it's kind of complicated and then again, it's not. So. <laughs> So, so in Germany, um, there are very high legal uh, rules. There, is, there are high um, barriers you have to overcome yeah. to publish a, a, a video that's been secretly taped without the knowing of persons involved. So um, that means when we've got a video where we see, we see Angela Merkel uh, speaking in a very mean way about Bayern Munich, for example, you know, saying that those are all uh, 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 very ugly fat guys uh, who who don't score enough, then that's not enough. So we need something of high public interest, of, of the highest public interest. So what we did was we, we took the quotes that we had and then we sorted them and we said, okay, which part is really the highest public interest? And, and our lawyers told us, they explained us, you know, we can't publish, you know, what what we'd like to publish. We, we can only publish things that are of the highest public interest. And, and because otherwise, we'd be um, take court and we'd lose. And we've seen after we published, I mean, there were many tries of involved parties to to get us in court and, and, and to get us in jail and to sue us or whatever. But we've won everything and we've won, um, especially because we acted as we did. So the courts and the, the, the prosecutors in Germany said that we only showed the parts that are of the highest public interest. And this is, like they think this was justified. Also, it's usually not allowed in Germany to show secretly taped videos of people. And I think that to stay, to make that uh, clear, uh, we were in an absurd situation because um, it is easier to quote from a secretly taped video and take the quotes out of it than showing the secretly taped video and the audio. So I think that is something that is the German law and we had to stick to the German law. So that's the reason why we were able to quote more in our written reporting and also in the book we wrote about the Egypt affair than the part that we were able to um, show in video and in audio. So I understand uh, the parts of our audience that would like to learn more and would like to see more. Um, but we were not able to publish more. And I also want to state there are parts that I, even if we were allowed, I would never show 
because it was simply uh, Mr. Stracher and Mr. Gudenus spreading um, rumors and um, things that um, are obviously not uh, true about third people that were not in the room. And I don't see any reason why we should um, distribute um, those statements. Yeah, and, and this is an interesting aspect. Florian, would the legal situation be different in Austria? Would you be able it's to publish? It's nearly the same. So we, the we same. have actually, there was a judgment by the Austrian High Court, by the Oberlandesgericht, that told that we are allowed to bring uh, and to publish those things because they said it's a, uh, it's in the public interest. It's a matter of corruption. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting because Mr. Strache always said that we are manipulating the video and that we bring fake news and that we don't broadcast those parts of the video where he uh, speaks against corruption, which is actually not true. You saw it in the video. I brought it. I said, I mentioned it at the end of the video that he always said everything has to be legal. Uh, and on the other hand, Mr. Gutenos uh, filed uh, one lawsuit after the other to prevent us to bring the video. Uh, In full so length. It, so this was kind of double play. Yeah? So they wanted us to bring it, but they sued us when we bring. So it was difficult. But I have to say that the Austrian courts, all in all, uh, made the good de decisions about it because they, they, they said that we can bring it. Now Mr. Strache, which is interesting, has access to the video because uh, it's part of his criminal files and he gave it to some tabloid uh, papers um, uh, to online media outlets that were in favor of him. Uh, there's one journalist, especially one journalist who is always like writing what Mr. Strache wants him to write and they published all the parts of the video. And they always- Other, pa other parts than what you published. Yeah, but there are parts that were also mentioned in the book Bastian and, and Frederick wrote so there's nothing new. So this is also the reason why there is not a big scandal now about it. So, so Strache always claimed that we were like uh, fake news and we were liars and we were manipulating. But in fact, um, everything we wrote was true. And you see today that uh, in another case, but it's the same, like the kind of the, the complex same complex, uh, mm -hmm. he, he got an indictment today. So he yeah. was charged with bribery today and he has to go to court. Yeah. The, um, there was one question that you basically already answered. Um, whether, uh, because, uh, what do you think of Strache saying that publishing the whole video would prove his innocence? If the um, whole video would prove his innocence, he just should publish it. <laughs> he doesn't publish the whole video. Yeah, yeah. So he he just could go. He has the video. He has all seven hours. Yeah. So he could he could publish it on his home on his own homepage. But actually, he didn't wanted us to publish it. When, when we got the videotape from, uh, uh, from, from the, the, the court files, he said he doesn't, he doesn't want us to publish it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of double, double, double play. Yeah. What were the legal reactions to your publications in both countries? Were you, were you threatened? Were you, uh, were there, um, yes, of course. Then? I mean, <laughs> So we we had um, we had a number of people um, who who went to the police and they asked for us to go to jail for uh, manipulating uh, proof. That was one uh, uh, one one case in in Austria. And, and then I mean for publishing the parts of the video and 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 whatnot. So and we we defended us against all those things and um as of now there are no no court no proceedings pending. anymore in in both countries and, were they were they uh, brought individually or uh, as uh, against you together individually against the deutsche and falter or or you as persons or so in germany against um, a number of persons and also against the uh, deutsche and also against the Spiegel. So, like, we had like I don't know, fifteen or twenty persons who 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 initiated.
if you if you show them something that, that they could get for favors and and so that, that's that's really powerful the wording is really powerful and we feel that um of course we we did some mistakes but we 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 didn't make any big mistake and and legally spoken we published what we were allowed through the special situation of highest public interest to publish. We couldn't publish more. Now there are five more minutes. I'm just warning you because I am the, the moderator. I'm really fascinated by the, the legal uh, implications because there's, this is such a new field, cross-border collaboration, and there are very few uh, legal cases uh, dealing with that. Um, but there's a question now from the audience, so I will not be carried away by my own pet topic. Uh, and that's Sabine again asking, is there anything to tell regarding Gudeno's wife? She was uh, involved in the, she was really involved in the uh, public discussion. Um, rally, I suppose, rally, if, I should say. Uh, are there any, maybe we can enlarge the question a little bit, are there any follow-ups to, are there any threads that you uh, haven't uh, followed? Are there any um, things that you could follow up still from the, from the video? Are there more stories to, to come out of this or is this more now following the, the, the current, the, today's case in Austria? No, actually the, the Ibiza case was the kickoff uh, of a numerous uh, cases that started in Austria, because some weeks after we published it, there was a whistleblower from uh, the Austrian uh, uh, gambling <coughs> company Casinos Austria, and uh, this whistleblower gave a lot of information to the corruption authorities, and they started raids uh, in the in the offices of the most powerful people in this country. So there were raids in the office of the finance minister, of the former finance minister, of the former former finance minister. There were raids in the offices of the bosses of the gambling companies, of bank managers. So there was a huge, uh, a huge wave of uh, investigations, and it's still going on. And um, now it's going to uh, not only the FPÖ party of Mr. Strache is concerned; it's also the party of Mr. Kurz, and we. We already found out that there are some uh, societies of the uh, uh, of the ÖVP party, so the party of Mr. Kurz, that got money from the Novomatic, for example, and it was just not indicted because it is uh, it was too early the case. It was uh, uh, yet, uh, the English word of uh, uh, too long ago. Too long. Ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> and Mr. Kurz got really nervous. For example, last week. Uh, he retweeted an article of his uh, of his party uh, press agency that wrote that we uh, didn't do a good job in the Ibiza work because we we didn't report about uh, uh, about some things that Mr. Strache said and, and and we got in a big battle with Mr. Kurtz about that. So it's still it's still going on, and yeah. I think it will it will change this country because it was the first time that you really see those people uh, doing corruption. And now Austria has a lot of chats because because of this uh, raid, a lot of uh, mobile phones were confiscated. So uh, the state authorities are now um, uh, saving all these chats from Mr. Kurz and his uh, ministers, and we can read that. So it's a lot of uh, uh, very interesting material about the inner core of the state. Yeah, not uh, not only about. Uh the two on the on the video yeah. um there's now only two minutes left so it's for me time to begin wrapping up there are no more questions i see someone writing but it's getting too late for answers i'm afraid i think the words from florian uh, that this investigation is changing your country because it uh, so prominently puts the question on the public uh, agenda is very encouraging uh, for the research report of a cross-border collaboration where from the very, very beginning you decided that it would be a clear win-win to collaborate, even though you were in the same language area and you could have competed, 
I mean, we, we got rid of a neo-fascist party and I mean, imagine that this party would uh, now govern us in the corona pandemic. Yeah? So it was the second wave of corruption. We had the first wave under Jörg Haider and then we had the second wave of corruption now and we got rid of them. And Mr. Strache is now not in the chancellor and the office of uh, chancellor, he's uh, in, the, in the court. And this is a, a, a very exciting outcome of this investigation. And this is a this is a very good way of closing this session, which I unfortunately have to do. I would love to keep talking with you, but we'll we'll meet again. So thank you very very much, Florian Klenk. Thank you very very much, Bastian Obermeier, and thank you very very much, Frederick Obermeier, who is uh, we hear you, but uh, we don't see you right now. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thanks for Thank moderating you. this panel. Thanks. Well, it's on my side to say also thank you, Brigitte, for moderating this fascinating panel. Thank you to the Obermeyers. You're always called the Obermeyers, although you are not brothers. Um, <laughs> but you work at the same newspaper, of course, at the Süddeutsche Zeitung. And also thank you, uh, Florian Klenk from the Falter, uh, for giving us uh, this information about this uh, highly interesting investigation. Uh, in a few minutes, meaning on uh, in uh, six o'clock, we will start screening the documentary about the Ibiza affair. If you don't have a ticket right now, go to the IJ4EU website and get a ticket, please. This film will make you an eyewitness of the investigation uh, that this panel uh, was talking about. Um, it is one of the most impactful uh, investigations that we saw in Europe in recent years. Uh, because a whole government, the Austrian government, stumbled over it. Now, before watching this film, it is my obligation uh, to close this conference. I also want to use the time that I have to make uh, two personal remarks uh, about uh, two news. Firstly, um, we as the community will not rest uh, until the murder of our colleague Yorgos Karavas, uh, an investigative reporter in Athens, is fully investigated. Um, secondly, and maybe you heard of it or you read it on Twitter, uh, today Poland's Constitutional Court has forced Adam Botnar, the Commissioner of Human Rights, uh, to leave office. Uh, Adam Botnar, we worked with him and he's an, really an ardent and passionate fighter for press and media freedom. And the government is not, as we know. And we will not let, let them get away with that. Now, let me thank you for this wonderful conference. Uh, first of all, thank you to all the extraordinary reporters and investigators who took part and showed us the results of their work. This was really a stunning uh, exhibition of the power of cross-border investigative journalism and a stunning exhibition also of collaboration, which was also a big aspect. Uh, in the panel that we had and also in the panels before. We at the ECPMF, we are particularly proud of having, of having had the opportunity um, to, to award the first prize that is ex exclusively dedicated to this cause, meaning to collaborative journalism across borders, the IG for EU Impact Award. I want to thank all the panelists and all the chairs of this uh, conference. I want to thank Zilke and Moteza for their workshop on using artificial intelligence in cross-border journalism. I want to thank everybody who helped facilitate the screening and uh, who uh, facilitated clips and documentaries. This is Real Fiction Filme. This is Premier Ligné Television. This is Euronews. This is RBB. And this is Dagens Nyheter. I want to thank our moderator, Ali Aslan, for hosting the conference, the Media Foundation of Sparkasse Leipzig for providing the rooms that we are standing here, and also for the technical support. It's uh, Gerd and Neil, which are sitting here and steer steering everything. Um, I want to thank our partners at IPI, namely uh, Tim Large, Scott Griffin, Helena Soares, and Barbara Triomfi. Barbara also moderated today. I thank the partners at EJC, at the European Journalism Center, especially Slatina Zidarova and Mirna Takur, and of course, uh, the ECPMF staff, which is Andreas, Katrin, Alina, Roberta, Nies, Tomke, Annabel, Jane, Lawrence, Nico, and Nick. 
I want to thank Alex Berlin um, for live streaming and the representation of the European Commission in Berlin for supporting this conference. Last but least, uh, special thanks goes to our supporters and funders which made all this possible. This is the European Commission, this is the City of Leipzig, OSF, Frit Ord and Luminate. And of course the man of the day who is already in another business, he's unfortunately not here, but I want to give a special thank you also to Barney Weston, who is the event manager of Uncovered and who made this conference happen together with Andreas Lamm. Um, if you have feedback on the conference, we are very happy to listen to it. Don't hesitate to contact us. Um, and here's my last word and my last recommendation. Uh, on the 18th of May is the start of Data Harvest, uh, the next conference on investigative journalism. If you want to continue to exchange and discuss, you should also take part in this online event. Again, thank you for your participation in Uncovered. We hope to see you again in one year's time. Enjoy the documentary on channel three, which starts at six o'clock. Um, and that will be streamed and um, that will guide you through the uh, investigation the last panel talked about. Again, thank you so much. Hope to see you next year latest. Thank you.